All right, everybody, welcome back to day two here at NYSE Wired plus the Cubes. Continuous coverage, this is our CXO series at Media Week here. I'm Dave Vellante, I'm really pleased to have Janine Sneed. She is the general manager for IBM Customer Success and Expert Labs at IBM. Welcome back to the Cube 2018 at IBM Think. You did the pop-up Cube with John Furrier. You were the ch chief digital officer of Hybrid. Yeah. The strategy is obviously working. So yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. New role. I'm not familiar with the Expert yes. Labs. You have to tell me about that. Customer success. What are you up to these days? Yes. So I lead a global organization of technical professionals, and we take care of our customer for everything after the sale. So we ensure that we can get clients up and running successfully using IBM technology. And then our CSM stay to engage with clients to ensure adoption, usage, and ensure that they are getting world-class, best-in-class experiences with IBM. You know, ahead of IBM Think this year, which was in Boston, I put out just a little random thought about IBM. I said, I haven't been more excited about IBM in a long, long time. Talked about hybrid cloud, talked about data, talked about AI, consulting, all the pieces are coming together. Even mainframe is you know, kicking in. Things are looking pretty good. Of course, Red Hat, it was look, turned out to be a great acquisition. <clears throat> and it got like, like literally, like <laughs> thousands and thousands of likes, people chiming in. I was, it was actually a like, little bit surprised. <laughs> it was kind of cool. Yes. Now we look around, stocks at an all time high. Yes. The strategy that the leadership team, generally Arvin specifically, has done a great job of really getting the company focused. So that's awesome. It's been a really good, good, good stretch. Um, and obviously, the hybrid cloud that you were a part of is a big, you know, contributor to that. And now you've got AI with, I call it Watson 2.0, kicking in. Um, so what do you, that's what I see yes. from my perspective. What's it like being part of that with clients? Well, first off, it's humbling. It's an honor that we are where we are right now, but you use the word focus, and it really started with a very focused strategy where IBM does two things. We do hybrid cloud and AI. And every investment that we make organically and inorganically ties back to hybrid cloud and AI. And so we kind of circle the wagons with products, grant, brand new innovation, uh, mergers and acquisitions that we, that we do, acquisitions specifically. Um, you look at ecosystem and what we're doing with partners. You look at technical skills and how we've really changed the way we engage with our clients with experiential selling. And it's coming together and we're not done. It feels great. Well, when you think about IBM Research, you put, I put that in the category of Xerox Park, uh, Bell Labs. Bell Labs is you know no longer in the U.S. It's owned by by Nokia. Um, I'm not sure what Xerox Park is up to these days, but IBM Research is alive and well. But one of the criticisms that I've always had of IBM is it had it's always had trouble taking that IBM Research greatness and turning it into product. And I remember I was at an analyst event last November. Uh, Dan O'Brien and, and his team invited us. And I really pushed Dario Gill from IBM Research and Rob Thomas, who's right in front of clients, on that issue. And I thought they gave a very transparent and honest and really credible approach as to how IBM has really solved that problem. And I think you're seeing it now where the innovation is not just for you know experiments. Right. It's, it's actually to drive customer value. And I think that sets IBM on a new trajectory in this AI era, um, which leads me to you know, how you think about what's coming out of the, the labs, how customers are absorbing that, specifically in the context of AI, and, and soon we'll be talking about quantum. Yes, absolutely. I agree with you. I think we figured out how to really get the technology out of IBM Research, starting with you know, our granite foundation models. And what we see at IBM with AI, there's really three core use cases. The first one is all about customer experience and how clients can take advantage of, there were a lot of what I would call like digital assistants and how they could extend those with foundation models, um, rag-based architectures for um, better experiences creating generative net new content. The second use case we see is digital labor and the third use case is around code and how developers could leverage AI for code generation. And those are the three things that we're seeing and that's all baked within a nice platform called Watson X 
And um, some of the innovations that you mentioned from IBM Research are part of what we do with the Watson X platform. So the data that we have from our, our with our survey partner ETR, which they're, they're down in New York, they primarily service hedge funds. We have a great partnership with them. We do these quarterly surveys. It shows a couple of stats, and I want to get your, your feedback sure. to what you're seeing. They say about 44, at least 44 to 45% of the customers, this is a sample of you know 1,800, say they're stealing from other budgets to fund Gen AI. And a good portion of those are from lines of business, marketing, you know, non-IT types of things. Um, they also tell us that the ROI expectations, really payback period, is getting pushed out just a bit. It used to be, oh, I watched the all-in pod and it says I can do this with my eyes closed. Well, it's harder than mm -hmm. people thought. So it's mm -hmm. getting pushed from three months. It's more like you know a year or even two years now. Mm -hmm. And the NPVs are relatively small. We're not talking about big wins. Now you've mentioned three use cases. I think of contact centers, um, I think the digital piece, and then the, the, the code generation is very clearly giving ROI. So a lot of people in, in the, the talking heads you hear hey, we're really not getting the ROI out of AI. What's this trade look like? NVIDIA is making all the money. I, I call it hitting singles. People are kind of getting warmed up. It's like preseason. Um, what are you seeing in terms of the AI adoption and AI ROI and how it's getting funded? Great question. So we are seeing clients move from what we call pilots over to production. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing cases of ROI. Um, ROI in the context of maybe 30 to 40% of code that's generated is accepted by developers. We've got cases with customer experience where they're handling questions coming in from clients 95 with 95, 96% accuracy. So we're absolutely seeing this. And you may have seen out on LinkedIn, IBM's own story of AI productivity with uh, Boston Consulting Group, Arvin and Joanne Wright, where yeah. we are client zero using our own AI technology to automate and offload some of the processes. We saw 1.5 billion in cost savings with line of sight to $3 billion in value. Now that doesn't happen overnight. And one of the things I'm gonna talk about on the CIO panel is one of the key things I, need, I believe CIOs need to be successful is how quickly they can see the signal through the noise. There are a lot of experience, experiments running out there but if they can figure out which pilots are not technically feasible, feasible are not financially feasible, they um, don't have those um, models integrated and workflows integrated into their business processes, shut those down. Move on to the things that are working and place the bet there. So I think that's one key thing that is gonna be important for CIOs and business leaders, as well as how they're developing skills, how they're integrating AI into applications. And it's not just about it, uh, uh, IT, it's also about business. Business has to be at the table with you to make those decisions. Think about two of the three use cases I mentioned are absolutely about line of business, not just tech. Yeah, and so, the fact that you have done that client zero, some people call it drinking their own champagne, sometimes yes, they call yeah, it yeah. dog food. Dog food, your <laughs> own dog food. But <clears throat> what I've seen, i uh, love your feedback on this, is, is customers come up with a huge list of potential initiatives. It's giant. And, and the technology team says, well, wait a minute, let's, let's pare this down. But right. they don't always know right. where the real ROI is. And so right. the business person, he or she who speaks the loudest, or maybe has the biggest P&L, might get priority, but the fact that you have experience there, so how is that experience, maybe it's through the consulting organization or even your organization getting translated to clients to help them prioritize? Right, I think one of the things that we see is how organizations can set up some sort of a central clearinghouse, mm -hmm. and it's cross-functional. It's with IT, it's with line of business, it's with legal, it's with chief procurement um, officers, it's with chief privacy officers, and how they're coming together to first, what are the business goals? You gotta start with your North Star. What is the business trying to do? From there, what are the use cases? From there, do I have the data? Is the data clean? Is it contextual? Is it relevant? Can I integrate that data into the models? Then you look at the tech stack and governance. So those are some of the things that we're seeing and in that central clearinghouse, that team is looking at, okay, this is the number one priority, this is number two, how do we allocate resources? How do we monitor the projects are working and taking off with ROI? It is truly 
cross-functional. And I will also add one thing. I read this study from McKinsey, mm -hmm. and they were talking about, you know, really what CIOs need to do to um, accelerate and scale AI. And you look at cost. And one of the things that can quickly get out of control in all of these use cases is not just the cost of AI, because some of the models are coming down, but change management. For every $1 being spent in IT, you're spending three on change management because it is truly about how you're able to get the AI integrated into your business processes and applications and change the way you and I work. It will change the way we work. Yeah, so despite the fact that technology is coming out, everybody talks about it coming out faster than it ever has in history, the adoption actually is not happening necessarily faster than it is in history. Of course, we're all experimenting right. with Gen AI, but because of change management, right. you know, it, it still takes many you know, years oftentimes for the organization to really see that impact. So AI is still not yet self-funding. Would you, would you agree? In, in other words, we're still having to, maybe take money from other budgets. The, the IT spending macro, maybe it's growing at a point higher than GDP. Yeah. But so then, so I'm looking for when AI becomes self-funded because I think it will launch a broader macro trend. Yes. Maybe not as big as it was during the tech bubble during COVID. Yes. Uh, but, but it sounds like you're starting to see that gain sharing happening we are in real we, time we are in fact we have a it was 2023 ai adoption index and we studied a bunch of companies and we saw 40 percent of the companies in the study were in production with gen ai 42 percent weren't and some of the reasons why they weren't were skills and change management and prioritization of use cases and so forth so i do believe you know the spending is going to get larger. I think I saw $1 trillion uh, in opportunity by 2030. Mm -hmm. So there will be shift. But I also think the spend is going to get larger for software. And then I also think that's going to drag along services because companies are going to be looking for expertise to do data modernization because you got to have clean data, AI transformation, and then how you're going to be able to take that AI and integrate it into your business. I'm surprised that how many um IT decision makers that we talk to feel like they're going to buy AI integrated, but a lot are saying they're going to buy it not integrated. They're going to mm -hmm. sort of play around. I would have thought, and maybe it's going to just take some time, that AI is going to be infused into applications, into infrastructure. It's going to largely be, it's going to be visible, but it's going to be underneath. You're not necessarily going to be DIYing your AI. What are you seeing in terms of that sentiment? I think it's a little bit of both. I see um, more clients talking, talking to us about open source. And we just released our granite models with um, under the Apache license. So they're open source and how they can take advantage of that. Because if you think about it, you know, you probably have the world's internet inside of these foundation models, but less than what 1% of enterprise data, your enterprise data is inside of the model. And so how you do that, because a lot of this is new. You mentioned earlier, it's just the right and pace of how fast AI is changing. Hmm. You're going to look for expertise to come in and help you do it. So I think it's going to be a mix of open source technologies, technologies that you have and some proprietary technologies. And of course, doing this in a hybrid way. It's, it's hard not to be excited about these very large foundation models that are, yeah. that are coming up. But the interesting thing to me about Granite is, uh, you know, we, we wrote a piece from LLMs to, to, to SLMs. To, to Sam, small action models that, you know, that 90% of data that's not there or the processes that just can't be hard coded into microservices, and which brings me to agents. Mm -hmm. So do you remember dial up? I yeah. remember the first time I did dial up <laughs> yeah. remotely and I was checking CC mail yeah. and I was just so excited. <clears throat> and I look back on that and, and sort of laugh at yes. so can't compare to what it is today. And I, a lot of people compare the 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 period that we're in now with the sort of initial dial-up era of of the internet. So I'm just really excited to see what's coming down yeah. the road. And, and and the agentic movement I think has a great potential. A lot of people are talking about co-pilots or single agents. Mm -hmm. The idea of having multiple agents actually mm -hmm. work in concert mm -hmm. um, and, and and present plans to humans is to me really really exciting. But to your point. You've got to have your data estate in order. You've got to be able to harmonize that. Um, what are you seeing in terms of the, or hearing from the conversation with CIOs in terms of 
how they're thinking about this agentic era. Yeah, I think they're excited about it. I think it's pretty new. I think they're trying to understand, you know, it, where is the logic and where's the reasoning? How is it working? That's coming in from a technical perspective. Um, I think it's probably still a little bit early, but it's coming. Um, and I think it's going to be integrated into the way we work. So, so. Um, back to kind of customer care, which is your warehouse yes. these days. Yes. So um, we talk about cloud native all the time. Now we're starting to talk about AI native. Mm -hmm. We're starting to see AI native capabilities. Contact center is obviously, you know, one. Um, do you think we'll, we'll see anytime soon or how widespread it will be just sort of AI only customer care? I don't know. I'm more of a, my view of more of a human and AI, because I do think human in the loop helps with, um, not every use case is going to be human in the loop, but there are going to be some use cases where humans were in the loop. I think it's also, you know, generational and time, right? There are some things today we would say we would never use technology for that, but we do. So I think as there's more trust in knowing you know, what went into the AI, what went into the model, it's going to become more pervasive. I think time will tell. Yeah, and, and I think, I know I've just found our own experience it, when you're on the phone saying, agent, please, agent, get me to I an know. agent because yeah. you need a human. Yeah. And maybe someday when we say agent, we'll get an AI it, agent. I know, that I know. Actually but do you think it's gotten us. better? Do you think some of the AI agents that you've worked with or digital assistants have gotten better? Slightly, okay. I would say slightly. Um, I'll tell you what's better is r the routing. You're not routed yeah. around as much, yeah. And it does depend yes. on how much the company's leaning into AI, yes. So you can get to the answer faster. So yes. that's that's noticeable, I think. Um, yeah, fraud detection is another one that just keeps getting better and better and better. But 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 back to customer care, I would love to see the point at which the agents, multiple agents can observe over time that human sort of tribal knowledge and incorporate it in a way that they could perhaps interact with with a customer. Yes. And the customer could actually, that human could guide the agents in a way that they can actually get to a resolution. And I agree. I, and with, I think that day's coming. With, I agree with um, sensing emotion, the memory in there, and kind of perceiving, you know, the reaction on the other end, right? Of what, how you as the customer are feeling and seeing, and, and I, I agree. I think it's coming, yeah, sooner than what we think, but um, time will tell. Well, I think the key is, it goes back to data. Mm -hmm. The data has to be harmonized. The data has to be governed. It's gotta yes. be trusted in order for these agents to work on it. That's right. So you've got a data play, you've got infrastructure, you've got, you've got you know, containers, mm -hmm. you've got AI, you've got the consulting expertise in a variety of industries. Um, all the pieces are coming together. So yes, we're excited about it. Thank you. See, Thank you so much. Thanks for coming on theCUBE here Happy at to be NYSC. Here. It's great Thank to have you. you. And Thank good you. luck with your CIO talk today. Thank you so much. All right, you're welcome. All right. all right, keep it right there. This is Dave Vellante, NYSC Wired, plus theCUBE, day two of our CXO series. We'll be right back right after this short break.